Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. Today, we have Crystal Sears of Azalea Administration. Her and I go way back, and we've worked together a long time. And we're going to talk about the what, why, and how of retirement plans for small business. I'm Karen. I'm a CPA, entrepreneur with big ideas, and I'm the mom. I'm Katie. I'm a payroll specialist, business owner, and detail-oriented person that makes things happen. And I'm the daughter. Welcome to Cheers to Business. Crystal, thank you so much for being here today. Tell who you are and how you got here. All right. My name's Crystal Sears. I started Azalea Administration. We are a third-party administrator. We set up 401k plans for employers, employer employer-sponsored retirement plans. I started this company in 2009, so we are now hit 10 years in business. Congratulations. Yeah, that's a a big milestone. (laughs) I tell you what, you were uh, really important to us, Katie and I, and Katie's not here today. She is slammed with some payrolls, and uh, she hated not being here, but we know she's listening, and so, hey, Katie, wish you were here. Yes. But you were the first company we had on payroll vault you were our first client in 2000 early 2015 so i was glad to be your first client (laughs) too i was happy that was another milestone to have to have a payroll company so well i tell you what we've always worked good together we met what 2008 i think so and that was my old, old life. Yes. And I was doing third-party administration yes. for retirement plans for clients, and I hated it. I don't know how you do what you do. <laughs> I always joke, and I tell people, I'm like, look, this is how I got started. Karen Simmons had, had some plans, <laughs> and I literally took my old forerunner over to her office, and I loaded up the back of my car, yeah. went back to the office, got the work done, and it started from there, you know? It's been a relationship yeah. made in heaven because <laughs> I didn't want them. Uh, it's very tedious, and especially in my old age now, I'm staying away from tedious, anything tedious. Yes. And yes. you work with actuaries. I mean, it just really, really gets complex, but we're going to keep it simple today. Right. Let's do that. <laughs> okay. The first thing we're going to talk about is what is a retirement plan? What is when small businesses start out, they don't have any money to put into a plan? Right. So normally a a new business, a small business is not going to have any money to put into a retirement plan. But once you get going and once you're making money, you need a retirement plan. You know, another thing I've seen, I think your business increases when we either have a hurricane, not catastrophic, but enough to where it helps the economy out. I hate saying that. Right. Sometimes it's good for a small one to hit. You don't want anybody to get hurt, but it does boost the economy. You're talking insurance adjusters, construction. Did you know that boob jobs are an indicator? <laughs> <laughs> I swear. I swear. When I was when I was practicing back in the old days when the storm hit, afterwards, I mean, the plastic surgeons. Yeah, people got money. Everybody <laughs> had money. And you could tell when the economy was tanking because the plastic surgeons weren't doing as well. Everybody got a boob job back when it was good. Is that deductible? <laughs> I don't do that anymore. <laughs> there you go. So anyway, FYI, boob jobs are an economy indicator. There you All right, go. Side note, sorry, I need a filter. You know, while we're sitting here talking about retirement plans, who should be looking for a retirement plan? Individuals. And certainly business owners. Business owners because, number one, they need that tax deduction and they need to save. Going back to the what. Yes. So either a company grows and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. When people are young, they think, oh, I got plenty of time for that. But then they get to be close to a 54-year-old grandmother like me, and they go, oh, crap, what am I going to do? I got to pay somebody to wipe my butt later on in life because I, you know, I only have one right. kid. yeah. So my <laughs> odds are good. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's not like I don't aggravate her. Sorry, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> so all of a sudden, I've got to get be responsible and be an adult, and I've, now I've got the money to do something. I have money sitting there. Not a whole lot, but a little bit, and I've got to start planning. Right. And so who should they reach out to first. Right. So the first person you want to always talk to this about is your CPA and or your financial advisor. That is going to be your go-to. They're going to tell you and advise you uh, if this is something you need to do or something that you should do. And I'll just tell you, once you start getting employees, you better have a 401k plan. If you don't, you may as well not have health benefits or anything else because people are looking for it. Well, it's so hard to find workers now. I mean, you've got to be able to compete with other companies. And 
sadly say you got to compete with the big boys too. That's right. That's right. We're in a good place right now. I mean, people that didn't have jobs, you know, three, four years ago, people have got jobs now. They're working, they're making money, like everyone's doing good. And and I can't tell you the growth I've seen in 401k plans. I t- you know what else I've been saying for probably for about a year now is that if you are unemployed right now, it's because you want to be unemployed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's jobs. I mean, I've had staffing companies tell me, hey, we got jobs that we cannot fill. Hey, if anybody knows a machinist, we need one at our fab <laughs> shop, by the way, please. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And and 401k plans, you know, there's always a way to start. And that might be just a simple plan where you don't need a third party administrator. Tell what know. that one is, because that one yes. is for that small yeah. business person. Mm-hmm. It's ideal. So a simple plan you know, the limits are a lot smaller. You can't max out to your 19 and 25,000 if you're over age 50. Um, but you can put in around, I, I don't know the limit right off, but I think it's around 11,000. I think it's 14, isn't it? Something like that. I don't yeah, know it, it's pretty, it's decent. And you do have to you know match. what? It's you get to put in more if you're over 50. Right. So that's it with the that's over right. 50. But always, you know, a, a simple plan is a great way to start you know, to get one started. The thing is, is, you know, you've, and it's an employer, you've got to match 3%. And if you were going to do a 401k plan, you got to match 4%. But there's two kinds of 401k plans, right? Right. You can do a straight 401k, or you can do a safe harbor 401k. Now, to me, a safe harbor has always been the way to go. Because then you're helping your employees that if they choose to help themselves. So yes. that's where a match comes in, people hear about. And then there's words like vesting. And we're not going to go into no. all that today. Yeah. That's where we want to give you listeners enough tidbits that you go ask the questions to have the bigger conversations. Yeah. <laughs> I always love working with you because you're so honest in what people need. So I'd call up thinking, you know, I want to say Harbor, say 401k plan and blah, 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 profit sharing, you know, possibly. And you come go, Karen, that person doesn't need all that. Do a, do a solo 401k. Right. Tell right. what that one is. Okay. So a solo 401k is for an owner and if they have a spouse, like cause a lot of times you have an owner, spouse, you know, company owned uh, setup. So either the owner or the owner's spouse. And that is simply called a solo 401k. It's very simple to set up. You set up with your financial advisor and you can max that thing out to, you can each put in $62,000 a year. That's crazy. If you're over, if you've got the comp to support it. Um, and that's a that's huge deduction. That's compensation, by the way. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Compensation. If you've got the the money, the income to support it, you can max that thing out. And, you know, that's $124,000 you can deduct on your income. That makes me think of insurance adjusters. It makes me think of truck drivers and wheel, realtors. Yes. Yes, definitely. So we do set those up. Um, I'll just tell you, I mean, we're about 400 bucks to set that thing up and about 600 a year to keep up with it. You know, and, if you're making the kind of money that you can max out that much into 401k the tax savings alone because you're probably with state tax going to be close to 40 percent yes yes and and getting to the the cost of it one uh, kind of neat thing is um, any brand new 401k plan and a solo k is considered a new 401k plan i hear a tax credit coming. a 500 hundred dollar tax credit for the first three years so that's that, awesome well so your cost is going to be a hundred bucks a year on the admin side so it, it's a and that's any 401k no matter if it's solo k brand new even when you convert your simple to a 401k plan. I did not plan. know that. Yes, you get that tax credit because you're going to have to start paying admin fees. Okay. You, you got to pay us to do the job. You know what I've seen, and it's just because people don't know what they don't know, but they'll say, I wrote a check and put $12,000 into my simple plan or my 401k, and we go, you know, they didn't use payroll vault for number one, or they didn't, right. didn't tell payroll vault, or, or me as a CPA yeah. till later on, but that stuff has to run through payroll. Yes, because yes. you have to tax it for Social Security and Medicare, right. but there's no federal or state tax. And that's where that 40%, if that's you're making right. a ton of money, yeah. you know, the highest tax federal bracket is 37%. And you got Alabama's five, but effectively about 4%. You figure you put $100 into a 401k plan. You're going to, if you say 40% of that, it costs yes. you 60, yeah. 60 right. cents on that dollar. Right, right. If, if you're a business owner and you do not have a 401k plan, you better call somebody because I'll tell you, I mean, just as me as a business owner, if I did not have a 401k plan, I'm already paying a lot in taxes. I mean, let's just face it. We we pay. I, freedom ain't free. We're, we got to pay taxes. <laughs> That's right. So, but, it, you know, with a 401k plan, you're going to, every 
thing helps. A 401k plan is it's a way to save money, but you're saving it to yourself. Yeah. You're just putting it in a side pocket to be used for later. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's still your money. And it has to be under these plans. It has to be held by a third party. Yes. You can't. It's tax deferred income. I've had people ask me, can I buy a house, a rental house in my <laughs> 401k? I said, you know, there's ways to do it in IRA, right? but you, you can't, can. You can't you touch can it. it. Yeah. You, you can't go cut the grass. Right. You can't nope. touch it. You can do it, but I'm not going to do it for I'm you. I'm not doing it. I would never <laughs> touch them. No. But we've got them. <laughs> no, so. no, I don't even want to touch that. Yes, it's too yes. much. We've had people want to buy cars. You you name it. So that hey, gets buy gold, touchy. isn't that what the commercial yes. says? <laughs> yeah. Hey, we got that too. I got somebody with that in the safe. So we've excited some listeners and go, what? you know, they're saying, oh my God, why am I not doing this? I can save money. I keep the money. But how do they do it? What do they do? Right. If you are an employee and you are working and you are making money, this is my advice to you. Go to your payroll person, your HR person, whoever is in charge of payroll. You tell them, let's just say I want to put in 5%, and your company's probably matching. So, And that's money you're losing on the, leaving on the table because even if they have a safe harbor – it's so complicated the way they it do is. it, but it's equivalent to about four percent. Yes, yes. But if you, you know, you tell them how much you want to defer and say, "Hey, what's that going to make a difference in my pay?" Because that payroll person can run that number and show you what five percent really is to your net. And you'll be so surprised yes. on how little that you won't miss that, right? Because you know. I like that book, The Wealthy Barber. Yes. And in that, it's I'm on the second Audible now, but in that book, it's pay yourself first. Right. For example, if you start putting it away, after a little while, you're not going to miss that money that you're putting away. Like payable vault that we pay the for the employer, we'll pay the 401k in if it's feasible. And the small amount, a little at a time, is much better than writing a big old check. Yes. So what I do is I would say, okay, starting January, my first paycheck, I want, by the end of the year, I want to have this much in there. So I'll just break it up over how many pay periods, and I don't miss it that bad. That's right. And that's the normal. That's what I do. That's what it, just about everyone's going to going to do. But just always remember, you know, it's a pre you can do pre tax or you can do Roth, which is after tax is it's you know, talk to your financial advisor, your CPA about which one is best for you. But if you do pre tax, you know, sometimes 5% might really be like 3% or 2% in your net pay. So well, when you take off the federal and state taxes, you're not having to pay in. Absolutely. That's right. That's right. And I'll tell you what to your employer this is the best thing for your employer because you want your people to be able to retire. You don't want to be paying health benefits to a 72-year-old person still having to work because they can't retire because you didn't have a retirement plan. Yeah, and I don't want to work at Walmart, you know? I mean, That's I'll, right. I'm more yeah. power to all those people who work at Walmart, but I'm not a very good greeter. You know, I'd start talking to somebody, next thing I know. You know I'd Everybody's get, walking out the door with TVs. Yeah, I'd get in trouble. <laughs> I, could, I would just get in trouble. <laughs> All right. So anything you hear about a 401k and try not to listen to anything negative. I'm such a positive person. Like the only thing negative I ever hear is like, oh, aren't 401ks filled with fees and and, you know, expenses and things like that. Well, you know what? Investing isn't free. And just watch some YouTube videos. Do something. I mean, you're going to see. Yeah. I mean, you can get some cheap index funds that aren't going to cost you anything, but you're not going to get a return either. It's risk. Pay. Mm -hmm. Pay for the fund. Pay the financial advisor to pick those funds for you and make some money. Well, most of the time that it's just going to be, it's going to be a percentage of the assets. So they want it to grow. More it grows, the more money they make. And yours, your fee is very reasonable. We're not going to get into that. And the more money you make as a participant. So. You definitely want the growth. You know, you want to invest in it. 401k sometimes are the only thing that people are investing in. And nothing wrong with that. No, not at all. I've always seen it, too, as if you put in a 401k plan for your staff, you've just given them a raise. Yes. And I have a lot of clients that look at it that way. You know, sometimes they'll do profit sharing versus bonuses or something. And and that's better for everyone because the employer's getting the deduction, the employee's getting a growth in their retirement. It, it works out. Well, and it, it also, I think it, it it's a reward for loyalty. It's loyalty because the longer the staff is there, the more vested they are in those funds that you 
in the profit sharing part, that's discretionary to the owner of how much they're going to put in. And then it's allocated based on a formula. But, you know, the longer you're there, the more you're entitled to that money. So it's a reward for staying with the company. It's so hard getting new employees and turnover and the learning curve that it, it's a cost to the employer. So why not reward your good people and have them stay? You actually, that's another way to save money in the long run. Right. And I, I think one of the other misconceptions I always get asked is, you know, somebody will say, well, once I put that money in there, I can never take it out. And that is not true. That is not the case. Uh, you have hardship reasons that you can take the money out if you desperately need it. For you're still going to have to pay tax on it. That's but, right. Unless it's a Roth. That's right. But yeah. there's no penalty. Right. There, well, you have a, if you're under age 59 and a half, you have a 10% penalty. But once you're 59 and a half, you can start taking withdrawals. You can move it to an IRA. You can do whatever you want to do. Uh, that's an in-service withdrawal, even if you're still working. But if you truly needed that money out of there for some kind of a hardship reason, you can get it. So I always tell people that, you know, put it in there because I think that's just a misconception. People think once I put it in there, I can't ever touch it or see it. Right. Um, And and that's not always true. You know, for the listeners out there that are employees, you know, a lot of times you can do a loan from your 401k. Yes. And that's a, usually a lower interest rate than a credit card or going to a bank and getting a loan. That's right. And and you can take 50% of your account balance for a loan. Now, don't you have to stop deferring into out of your paycheck into nope. it for a while? You used to with hardships, but that's gone. Really? Now, yes. I didn't know Now that. you don't stop deferrals for any reason. So. See what happens, how much I lose when I get out of the yeah. business. Yeah. <laughs> so definitely, you know, loans are, are an option. Um, I'm not a huge fan of loans, but if you need it, and as an employer, it'll keep you from having to loan your employees money. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and as an employee, you know, if you need it, like uh, like Karen said, you know, you're paying the interest back to yourself, not the bank or the credit card. Yeah, it doesn't or, go to the employer. Whatever. The interest so. you're paying in stays in your 401k. Right. That's right. And and you can take up to 50% of your account balance or uh, $50,000. So. Um, that's a that's a pretty good deal, you know. So so definitely even more of a reason to save in case you ever needed it, needed to to take it. So, Crystal, what is the best client for you? Any client. We have clients from one person to our largest plan is five thousand employees. Holy cow! And from one dollar to fifty. Million. You have a plan with fifty million dollars in it. Yes. Yes. Wow. So, um, you know, we like them all. So, definitely. You know, I'm a big proponent of why I don't clean my house and why I outsource everything that I can. And that's kind of what you do, right? Or it is? Yes. That 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 is exactly right. We are your outsourced th- administrator. <laughs> and. Folks, trust me, you do not want to mess with this stuff. It's too complicated. It's too regulated. It's governed by the ERISA laws, which I'm not even going to go into. And so if you don't know what you're doing with this stuff, then you don't need to be touching it. That is absolutely correct. And I believe the same way. I don't do payroll. I don't want to do payroll. I'm not an accountant. I'm not a CPA. I don't want to be a CPA. Just let me do what I do, and I will do the best job for you. And that's why we're such good friends. Yes. <laughs> One thing I'd like everybody here to know that's listening, Crystal's actually sponsoring this show today. Thank you so much You're for coming out. But you know what? I would recommend you in your company. You've got a great team, whether you were sponsoring or not. You have always taken care of my retirement plans in my companies. You have always taken care of my clients. You know, I made a life choice, but I still care about them, want them to continue on. Right. And your company, Azalea Administration, has been such a pleasure to work with. You made it easy. You took care of me, and I want to thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And thank you for you're sponsoring. Welcome. That's exciting to have a sponsor yes. today. Yes, and I'm happy to sponsor in any way that I can. So um, definitely, and I encourage everyone out there, if you have a business, get in touch with Karen and sponsor this thing. Get on the air. Well, thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Hey, go to iTunes too. Rate us really big. We want to keep doing this. Well, Crystal, we've got everybody stirred up today about, you know, oh, I can save some money and I can get to keep the money. So how do they get in touch with you? Okay. So I would love to tell you to call me. (laughs) But I'm not going to tell you that. I'm going to tell you to call your CPA 
uh, call your financial advisor. There's a pretty darn good chance that I already work with them and and go from there. But if you want to learn and you do want to call me and, you know, maybe you're not getting a response from them, by all means, uh, our website's azaleaadministration.com. Uh, my email address is on there, phone number. Uh, hunt me down. Google it. You know, you can find somebody these days if you if you need them. I tell you what, another tidbit too is that you are president of the West Mobile Rotary this year. Oh, goodness gracious! I know. So come <laughs> come see us for lunch at Briquettes on Mont Lamar. Yes, on there you go. And we get points for guests. So come on, at, uh, twelve o'clock, Mont Lamar on Briquettes. Come as my guest or Karen's guest. <laughs> come as my guest, and I'll take yeah, we'll take credit for you. We'll take turns. Yes, oh. and and I would love to talk to you about your business, your four hundred one k, whatever you need or have questions on. I love what I do. This is all I've ever done. I started out in college. I've never done anything else. So it's really all I know. I I really do. I love what I do. I love the people that I work with, the people I see, the people I meet. And thank you. Thank you so much. All right, Crystal, every end of the show, Katie and I come up with the cheers. Okay. All right. So I'll do one, then you do one. Cheers to saving taxes on money that you're putting aside for yourself. I'm going to keep it real easy, and I'm just going to say cheers to Friday. (laughs) Because this has been a crazy week. I I just told you, I said, I think I'm going to need to smoke or vape after this (laughs) week. We'll have to we'll have some wine. <laughs> Something, yeah. The it seems like the later into the year it gets, the crazier it gets. So. All right. Well cheers to you. Yes. Cheers to the administration and cheers to retirement plan. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all, thank you so much for listening and being here with us today. I'm Karen. I'm Katie. Please be sure to subscribe to Cheers to Business podcast on iTunes or anywhere else that you get your podcast. Visit our Facebook and be sure to give us a like. And if you have any questions or topics you'd like us to discuss, shoot us an email from the website, cheerstobusiness.com.